Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for tonight's Parent Forum. We're going to take a little time to look at a uh, survey results that came through earlier in the year from our uh, students at the Junior Senior High School. My name is Kyla Hosier. I'm the principal at the Junior Senior High School. We're joined here with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Victoria Newell. Good evening, everyone. And our assistant principals, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Joseph. And I'm really pleased uh, to have members from our principal's advisory committee with us here tonight. Should know that they've done a lot of work already this year. They put together the presentation and agreed to participate tonight. So I'm gonna ask each of our principal's advisory committee members to say hello and introduce themselves now. Hi, I'm Avik Agarwal. I'm a junior at Edgemont and this is my second year with Pat. Hi, I'm Fiona Stern. I'm a sophomore and this is my first year on PAC. Hi, I'm Evelyn Gipstein. I'm a freshman and this is also my first year on PAC. Hi, I'm Alyssa Klein and this is my second year on PAC. I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Ariel. I'm a junior and this is my second year on PAC. Hi, my name is Logan. Uh, I'm a junior and this is my second year on PAC. All right, thank you everyone. With that, just bear with me while I share my screen. So tonight we wanna to take a little time to speak with you about our Principals Advisory Committee, just so you know uh, how the committee came to be and some of the work that they've done so far uh, this year and in previous years discuss the uh, process we used to create the student survey earlier in the year, talk a little bit about the themes that emerged from the survey, discuss some of the changes that we brought about based on the feedback we received and try to leave some time for questions and answers. Uh, in the email reminder that I shared today, you will find a Google form link. So you can uh, access that link to submit questions. You can submit questions now, or you can wait and submit questions once the presentation is over. And with that, I'll turn it over to Avik to talk a little bit about the advisory committee. Thanks, Mr. Hozier. Um, so yeah, the principal advisory committee, um, Mr. Hozier, the slide hasn't, yet. yep, thank you. So the principal advisory committee, or we call ourselves PAC, is a group of nine of our students from grades nine through 12. And we meet we weekly with Mr. Hozier. So we give him our student perspective on any issues currently being discussed by the district, faculty, staff. And the selection process for PAC involves an interest meeting. So we hold this towards the end of the school year and ask applicants to like fill out an application form where we look for diversity in candidates and a variety of perspectives that can be valuable to our committee. And while the committee discusses each candidate, Mr. Hozier ultimately makes the final decisions to determine who is accepted. And as for some background on what we've worked on, we've worked on a lot in just a year and a half. So we started with the extracurricular list. So as some of you might remember, the extracurricular list of the past was not updated with the inactive clubs being removed. And we've updated this list and established a set of club guidelines to make sure that all the clubs currently running are real clubs with accurate information that students can find and join easily. PAC members also serve on hiring committees for various teaching and district positions. And we serve on other groups like the district stakeholder group or we're invited to PTSA meetings. And we're also involved in specific committees on certain topics. So for example, I personally was involved in like the athletics reopening committee last January when we were deciding whether we could reopen athletics with current COVID conditions. And PAC is also involved with COVID related issues since that's like one of the most discussed topics right now. So in the past, the six period versus nine period day schedule, and then more recently, each COVID protocol at the high school and how they are changing. So we're involved with a decision making process there. Importantly, we've also held a couple student surveys in the past. So the learning models at the high school, so hybrid versus remote from last year. And then towards the end of last year, we had a survey on chemistry honors since last year was the first year where we had that split between regular, like regions chemistry and honors chemistry. And then most recently we made that survey that Mr. Hozier was referencing on like the return to school at the beginning of the school year and seeing how people felt about that shift. So I'll turn it over to Logan to talk about the creation of the survey. Yeah, so uh, with this survey, we really wanted to see how the school school year was going so far, identify key problems as well as things to work on and improve. 
Uh, so we asked a wide range of questions to help improve overall stu student life. Um, after creating the survey, we shared it with a small group of administrators and teachers to improve our questionnaire. And then we released it to all faculty, staff, and students. Uh, we received 297 responses and examined the data to identify key takeaways and problems and then brainstormed possible solutions. The results from the survey, as well as our insights were shared and examined with leadership. The student feedback was then examined once more by faculty and staff. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Fiona to talk about some of the themes. Thanks, Logan. So from the nearly 300 students who responded to the survey, several themes became apparent. We were pleased to see that students are generally having a positive school experience. The transition from hybrid and remote learning to fully in-person learning is one that could have understandably been very difficult. However, the survey helped us to realize that for the most part, students have been experiencing a smooth transition. Understandably, the challenge of moving from open notebook tests to traditional assessments is one that has been experienced by many students. Over 60% of survey respondents did indicate that this was an issue. To give some background, during last school year with remote and hybrid learning, the majority of tests were at home, untimed, and students had full access to their notes. However, this year, the majority of assessments occur in the classroom with a time limit and without access to notes. And so this has been a challenge for some students. We also saw some interesting um, feedback on COVID. So for the most part, students seem to have been quite happy with the COVID protocols when they filled out the survey in November. However, of those who gave a more detailed response, we saw a clear split between those who felt that the protocols are too strict and that the distancing and masking should be relaxed. And among those who felt that it was already too relaxed and that there needed to be increased distancing and masking and other measures put in place. Um, but overall, most students seem to have been happy with how the protocols were being administered. Um, another theme that we found was prominent among students was a desire to reopen the back of the cafeteria. For those of you who are not familiar, the cafeteria is split into two sections with a glass wall. On one side, there's a larger area and then behind the glass wall, it's smaller and instead of the typical desks and tables, there are desks and chairs, there are booths that can seat about four students. This was originally concerned out of concern of, this was closed out of a concern of the COVID spread that too many students would be close together without their masks on. However, from many responses to the survey, we found that the opposite turned out to be true. With the closure of this area, many students found that the front part of the cafeteria was too crowded, making it even more unsafe, and that with the colder weather, there were too many students inside, and so that having the back of the cafeteria closed was not a feasible option. Um, next slide, please. So for the overall school experience among seventh and eighth graders, we found that students are very, very happy. Over 90% rated it a three or four on a scale of one to four, with one being very negative and four being very positive. Um, then on the next slide, we see that our ninth through 12th graders had a slightly different um, reaction with more mixed, but still a majority of students were rating it on a three or four towards the positive side. Um, then on the next slide, for opinions on COVID safety precautions, we can see that the majority of students were pleased with how um, safe we were being. So they were again asked to rank on a scale of one to four with one being needs improvement and four being really good, how they felt about the COVID safety precautions and more than 80% of students rated it a three or four being really good. Now I'll pass it on to Ariel to go in depth on some more of the themes from the survey. Thanks, Fiona. Okay, so if we go back one slide. Thanks, Mr. Hozier. Okay, so just a couple more themes from the survey that, that we found. As many of you may know, we used to have a six period schedule last year. And this year we have switched back to the nine period schedule as we had it in previous years. And of course, with a longer period day, a lot of work expectations increased and people found that 
they had a lot more to do. Uh, along with that, a lot of honors and AP classes that students are taking now with the increased period schedule means that they have little to no time for outside commitments. And that along with taking such a rigorous load provides a lot of stress. And some of that stress came from multiple tests that were given in one day. Across our data, we have found that almost 44.9% of students' stress was at a level four, which was the highest that we reported. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so just a quick overview. Like I said before, we switched to nine periods this year. And if you take a look at the graph, we have around the majority saying that the pacing of the classes is between a three and a four, which is to be expected as there are more classes in a day. Continuing, if we take a look at stress levels, we're seeing that among all the students in all of the grades, we have had data between a three and a four on stress levels from one being not very stressed and four being very stressed. And if we take a look at how that compares with homework, we see that the majority of students could spend anywhere from one to three hours on their work with some students going all the way up to five plus hours. And that is usually correlated with their grade level. Okay, so right, if we go back into the grades, we have seen that seventh and eighth graders are between a two and a three on a stress level, which is expected as they usually have fewer classes. And as we move on through the high school, we have uh, ninth and 10th graders rating at a three and a four majorly and 11th and 12th graders more on the level of a four, but there are some that go down to a three. And lastly, if we just look at how homework is spread out, we notice that most seventh and eighth graders are spending between one and two hours of homework. And that number increases through the grade level as students are taking on more classes and more commitments with ninth and 10th graders usually spending around two to three hours and 11th and 12th graders spending an average of three to four hours. I will now pass it over to Evelyn to talk a little bit about how we have been implementing change based on some of the feedback. Um, yeah, so we've implemented several changes based on the survey responses. Um, so first, as Fiona said, the student feedback was overwhelmingly in favor of opening the back cafeteria. Um, the reason that it had closed in the first place is that there were some COVID related concerns about how possibly having the back of the cafeteria open could lead to an increase in COVID cases. Um, but as it turns out, having the back of the cafeteria closed actually led to more congestion in the front. Um, so we realized that it was probably best to open the back of the cafeteria with a four student per table limit. So there still is distancing. Um, and so far there haven't been any problems with this really. Um, the next thing that we did is, as Ariel said, um, some of the feedback definitely indicated um, high academic stress levels for some students. So to help ease this, we revised our testing schedule to help limit the number of tests that students have per day. Um, so English, foreign language, and science are now testing on odd days in our six-day cycle, and math and social studies classes are testing on even days. Um, also, if a student has more than three tests in a day, they are allowed to move one to the following morning before school. And so far, this seems to have helped with the academic stress that um, students are experiencing. Um, and then also, uh, starting at the beginning of quarter three, which was Monday the 31st, so just a few days ago, um, students have been allowed to keep their tests from this quarter. Um, and we did this because the survey indicated that this might be helpful in studying for future tests. Um, and now I'll hand it over to Alyssa, who's going to talk about what we're hoping for in the future. Thank you. Um, so before I begin, I just want to point out some background information on the current COVID cases. So when we first came back from break, we had over 80 positive cases. And last week, we only had five. So we're definitely moving in a positive direction. So first, I just want to talk about end of year tests and final exams. So we are expecting to have finals, regions, and AP exams in person. Um, and then for senior events, um, which includes senior forum, prom, and graduation, we're hoping that they'll be the same as they were in the past, but it's too early to have an exact plan. 
And lastly, on the topic of trips, for example, the trip that physics normally takes, we're hoping to open up the option for all grades to be able to continue going on trips. Um, so we're very optimistic and hopeful that future events will be more normal um, very soon. And I believe that's all we have for today. Thank you, Alyssa. And uh, thank you to our, all of our students for helping to share that information. We now want to try to uh, open up the discussion uh, for, for any questions that you may have. So again, we have the Google form that was in the email that was shared earlier today. So if you have questions, please submit questions in that Google form. We'll do our best to answer all of the questions that are asked. We may paraphrase questions a bit. We may not repeat questions if they're asked um, multiple times. But with that, Ms. Johnson, do we have any questions? Yes, so far we only have one question, but it is about COVID cases and online learning. Would we ever go back to hybrid or online learning? Uh, and uh, before I answer that, I just want to acknowledge uh, Ms. Jacobs, our department chair for special education. She was able to join us while the presentation was happening. So thanks for being here. The, uh, the idea of going back to remote learning, I think uh, we've learned a lot over the last 20 months. We know that we can do that if we need to, but we also know that there's a huge benefit academically and socially for students to be on campus. Students learn better when they're on campus. They receive more support when they're on campus, and we believe that they're happier when they're on campus. If we ever had a situation that required us to go fully remote, we could make that transition, but we're hoping given the uh, decrease in new cases that that is not something that we have to do moving forward. That is our only question at the moment, Mr. Hosier. Wow, okay, we'll give everyone a second to see if we have more questions coming in. Perhaps the presentation was so clear uh, that there were no questions left to be asked. And if that's the case, moving forward, I'm gonna ask all of our students on this call to create all future presentations for me. And for me. <laughs> Okay, we just had another question come in, uh, again about COVID. Uh, it says, if a child is positive, do they go remote? Yes, anyone uh, who is positive or quarantine, we offer the um, option to go remote. Obviously, if the student's not feeling well, well enough to join classes, they do not need to. But while they're remote or while they're out in quarantine, they are able to go remote, which means that they can join via Google Meet and um, listen to the classes that are happening um, just like they would have last year. The one difference I would say is that we have very few students who are remote now. and We've asked teachers to make sure that they teach to the students in front of them, but also trying to provide that support to students while they're remote so they can hear what's happening. And all the work uh, is provided on Google Classroom. As well, I just wanna add something to that if that's okay Kyle as well as that the assessments would be taken once they return to school. Yes and I'll, I'll just say that again um, Ms. Jacobs your uh, audio was breaking up a little bit. Uh, assessments are not done virtually this year. Assessments would wait until students return on campus. There's another question come in and it's about seventh grade and social skill building are there any activities planned for the seventh graders? Ms. Johnson, do you wanna take that? Sure. So earlier in the fall, um, the seventh grade team did plan a social event that went very well for the students. And yes, they are working on other events for later in the spring. And hopefully as Mr. Hosier mentioned, we may be able to do some trips. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But even if we don't do trips, yes, there will be some social events for, for uh, mixing and social skill building. Uh, the next question is, will these student surveys be continued in the future? I think we found a, a lot of helpful information 
in the student surveys. So my hope is that with the strong group that we have with PACT now, that moving forward, we continue to have a, a good group of uh, students who want to join the Principals Advisory Committee and could keep this going. I think we always want to try to get feedback from students to get a sense of what we need to work on. And we did a survey last year, the survey this year. It, it's proven very helpful. There are no additional questions at this time. Okay. Well, if we, if we don't have any additional questions, uh, we will share a recording of this in my weekly update. Uh, we may even share the presentation for anyone who wants to take a closer look at that. And I, again, just wanna um, extend my thanks to our students with us this evening. Uh, I, they meet with me every Wednesday at 7.50 a.m. They take a ton of time out of their busy schedules to help on different committees and give us different insights. So really want to thank you publicly for all the work that you've done and will continue to do for the remainder of this year. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night.